A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we do not fear, though let the earth should change, though let the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy habitation. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in the uproar, the kingdom is fire, he utters his voice, the river of us. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come on, behold the works of the Lord, see what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. A reading from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, 
Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Typically, our 8.30 and 10.45 Sunday worship services are distinctly different. We call the 8.30 service traditional, mainly because of its language and music. We use a more formal liturgy. An organ and choir lead our singing Worship leaders dress in a ch churchier style. <laughs> we call the 1045 service praise, mainly because of its language and music. We use a more informal liturgy with less churchy words. A praise team of singers and musicians leads our singing. And worship leaders dress in whatever we wore to worship. The two services are different. <clears throat> different enough that those who choose one style often refuse to appreciate the other. <laughs> and yet, despite their distinctive differences, there is much about the two services that is the same. They have the same order of worship. They have the same pieces of liturgy. On most Sundays, the same scripture passages are read and the same sermon is preached. And though the services are different ways of worshiping, the same God is worshiped. Today's eight. 30 and 1045 worship services are even more different than usual. In this 830 service, we are celebrating the Reformation. And at the 1045 service today, we will be celebrating the rite of confirmation. Those celebrations are distinctly different Yet despite the differences, there is much about the two that is the same. Reformation was a movement in the church in the 16th century. A monk named Martin Luther had some concerns about the beliefs and the practices of the church. He and many others believed that there were some important ways in which the church had pulled away from its biblical foundation, particularly that the church had overshadowed the good news of God's amazing gift of grace with rules and works. Luther and other religious and political leaders and people took a courageous stand and publicly stated their beliefs about God and God's grace. God's undeserved love freely given. And out of their ensuing protests, for reformation in the church, the Lutheran church, and essentially all Protestant Christian denominations emerged. Confirmation, on the other hand, is an annual movement within the Lutheran church when youth of the congregation publicly state 
their belief in God. For most teenagers, that is a pretty courageous thing to do. I'm not sure I could talk many adults into getting up in front of the congregation and declaring what they believe. Because in this church we baptize infants, we obviously cannot baptize them into their own faith. They don't have any yet. We baptize them into the faith of their parents and their sponsors and the congregation. The parents and sponsors and congregation then promise to provide the tools and environment for the child's faith to grow. The Holy Spirit comes into the child at his or her baptism, and the parents promise to bring that child to church, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and teach them the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and the Ten Commandments. We want that embedded Holy Spirit to grow faith in our children so that as they grow into adulthood, they will have their own faith in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We want them to take responsibility of their faith from their parents and courageously claim it as their own. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 disagreements with the Roman Catholic Church to the door of the church in Wittenberg, and the Protestant Reformation began, and it changed the world. On October 27, 2019, Avery Corley, Maggie Hughes, Olivia Myers, Wade Perkle, Millie Stone, Courtney Swinford, and Sagan Trough will celebrate their confirmations, which should certainly change their worlds, and perhaps change ours as well. Neither October 31st, 1517, nor October 27, 2019, were or are the completion or end of anything. Both days represent new beginnings, or at least continuings. The Reformation was a critical opportunity for the church to analyze and evaluate and reform its beliefs and ministries. But that can never stop. If the church ever stops reforming, then either the kingdom of God has come or the church will surely die. Christ's church can never be satisfied with where or what it is. The Bible continues to call us and guide us and send us out as servants. It continues to cry out for the church's beliefs and practices to be analyzed and evaluated and reformed. 
October 31st, 1517, didn't end something, it began something. More accurately, it continued something that Jesus began. Confirmation isn't the end of something either. Our youth aren't graduating. I think it sort of feels like graduation to them. They finished all the classes and the worship notes and the camps and the projects and the tests. But they haven't learned everything there is to know about God. They haven't discovered everything that following Jesus entails. They haven't experienced the full power of the Holy Spirit in their lives any more than you or I have. They were sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever in their baptisms. Jesus has called them to faith and the Holy Spirit has gifted them with faith and today they will respond by confessing Jesus as their Lord. But for the rest of their lives and ours, we have to analyze and evaluate and reform our beliefs and practices of faith. If that ever ends, either the kingdom of God has come or our faith has died. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Reformation and confirmation are about claiming the truth of Jesus as the truth for your life and continuing in it. Our youth look for truth in many places, school, their friends, sports, arts, television. And though they may find some things that are true in those places, they will not find ultimate truth. We adults look for truth in family, in jobs, and democracy, and political leaders. And though we might find some things that are true in those places, we might, we will not find ultimate truth. Jesus is the truth and the way and the life. Everyone who claims Jesus as Lord has to make that confirmation every day, which will probably lead to some reformation every day. And it doesn't matter whether you prefer traditional or praise worship. They are not the truth. They each proclaim the truth as best they can. Amen.